everyone! My name is Teacher Margaret and I'm from the Baston Room and today I get to read with you. So I've selected some stories, so let's get started. Alright, so the first story I'm going to read is The Love is You and Me, which is a really sweet story, so I hope you enjoy. Alright, Love is You and Me. Love is me and love is you. So when you smile, I smile too. When you're around the skies are blue, it's like being happy times two. Love is sweet. Oh, that looks delicious. Love is grand. Sometimes love is just holding hands. It's a feeling inside. They look really happy together, don't they? It's a smile in your heart. It keeps us together when we are apart. And they're talking on the phone. Probably what we've been doing a lot, FaceTime, Zoom. Love is fun and it is feeling free. So happy. Love lets you be who you want to be, which is very important. Love will catch you when you fall. Love, it is the greatest gift of all. Hmm. It's just us two, without a care. It's what we give. And the times we share. <laughs> it wipes away the tears and sends our troubles along. Love is the place where you always belong. Look at that. So nice. And we've got love, me, and you. We're sticking together, and we will see it through. And wherever we go. <laughs> love will always be because... Love is you and me. The end. All right, so the next book I'm going to read is called Ten Little Monsters Visit San Francisco. So I used to live in San Francisco, and it was a lot of fun, but then it was time to come home back to the Pacific Northwest. So we are going to take a trip to San Francisco today. Let's get started. monsters love to play at the city by the bay. Ten little monsters, they can't wait to visit the city with the golden gate. Oh my goodness, what are these monsters up to today? Hmm. Ten little monsters decide to come to the Academy of Science Planetarium. One little monster points to the skies, that's my mom, and off he flies. Uh-oh. Bet you know where this is going. Nine little monsters rolling so sweet, zig and zag down Lombard Street. They laugh, they shout with such delight, but one turns left when he should have turned right. Oh dear. Let's see what happens. Eight little monsters plotting as they take a tour of Alcatraz. One says, I'll escape today, so he jumps and flushes away. <laughs> Seven little monsters at Gregeli Square. See the delicious treats they made there. A little taste so gooey and so sweet. Someone invents a brand new treat. Oh, chocolate is one of my favorite foods, you guys. Six little monsters are in the mood for Fisherman's Wharf's fantastic food. Here's mine, says one, and then he shouts it louder. Now on the menu, monster chowder. Mm. Uh-oh. 
monster chowder. I wonder what that would taste like. Five little monsters at Pier 39. Shop till they drop, then nap just fine. Back come the sea lions. Look at that. Up they plop in a monster. Go flat. Ooh, oh dear. They lost another monster, you guys. Four little monsters travel down a busy street to Chinatown. But oh no, it's a dragon attack. One little monster never comes back. <gasps> They're just losing monsters all over the place, you guys. Three little monsters want to ride on a cable car, so they hop inside. Oh. One finds a place where he can see well, at least until they ring the bell. Ring. <gasps> What's going to happen to these monsters? Two little monsters curiously come to explore the Exploratorium. They discover they play and they decide to invent. One becomes an experiment. Uh oh. All these monsters are just leaving. <gasps> oh dear. I wonder what he's thinking. Hmm. Well, um, here's the Golden Gate Bridge. It's like we're all my monster friends. Mm. One little monster feeling great. He walks across the Golden Gate. But I'm traveling so independent. <laughs> Down swoops the seagull from out of the sky. There goes the monster. Wave goodbye. Mm. Taking another trip with the little seagull. Mm. Who would have thought? And that's it. Their little monsters all reunited. What a great book. Let's see what our next book is. All right. So the next book we're going to read is Where the Wild Things Are. And this is one of my favorite books when I was a little girl. And I'm so excited that I get to share it with you guys today. So let's get started. Where the Wild Things Are. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind. And another. His mother called him Wild Thing and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. Oh no. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. Oh, wow, look at all those trees. <laughs> and it grew. Oh my goodness. And grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around him. Oh, look at all of that. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max, and he sailed off through the night and day. Well, he really is going on an adventure, you guys. Look at that. And in and out of the weeks, almost over a year, to where the wild things are. Look at all those wild things on the sailboat. <laughs> oh, page is back. I'm sorry, you guys. There we go. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and showed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. My goodness, look at those wild things. <gasps> Till Max said, be still, and tamed them with a magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once, and they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all. What a title to be called. <laughs> and made him king of the wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. And king of the wild things. And they're dancing in the moonlight, having a really good time being wild things, it looks like. Hanging from the vines, swinging like wild things do. <laughs> Just 
having a gee golly good time. Look at that. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of the wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then around, from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat. And so he gave up being king of where the wild things are. Mm, I would be pretty hungry too if I went to sleep without any food. Let's see. But the wild things cried, oh please don't go, we'll eat you up, we love you so. And Max said, no! The wild things roared their terrible roars, showed their terrible teeth, and rolled their terrible eyes, and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat, and he waved goodbye. And sailed back over a year, and in and out of weeks, and through a day. Really long journey Max is taking you guys. And into the night of his very own room, where he found his supper waiting for him. You can see his dinner is right there. Probably really hungry. <laughs> and it was still hot. He, uh, what a great journey Max had. Have you guys ever been on a long journey like that? All right, so we're going to read another classic called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Oh, this is one of my favorite books. I'm realizing with reading with you guys that I just love a bunch of different books. So let's get started. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. Look at all of the food he's eaten so far. The price he's still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. But guess what? He had a stomach ache that night. Oh my goodness. I am not surprised he eats so much food for that little body. The next day was Sunday again, and the caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much, much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, large caterpillar. So he built a small house called a cocoon around himself and he stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon and pushed his way out. And he was a beautiful butterfly. Look at those beautiful wings. And the art is amazing in this book. Have you ever been as hungry as a hungry caterpillar? I bet you have, I know I have. <laughs> All right, you guys, so the last book we're going to read together today is called The Pout Pout Fish. Let's get started. The Pout Pout Fish. Deep in the water where the fish hang out lives a glum, gloomy swimmer with an ever-present pout. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, 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 blub. Oh, how sad. 
Along comes a clam with a wide winning grin and a pearl of advice for her pal to take in. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your crosstown frown, don't you think it's time to turn that upside down? Says the fish to his friend. Nice thought, Mrs. Miss Clam. I hear what you're saying, but it's just the way I am. Here, take shirt. And the clam has a nice little pearl. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. <laughs> Along comes a jellyfish, and he floats through the ocean. His tentacles are trailing in a gentle locomotion. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily skelly scrowl, I wish you wouldn't greet us with a grimace and a growl. Says the fish to his friend, Mr. Jelly, I agree. I'd like to be more friendly, but it isn't up to me. How sad, you guys. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Oh, oh. Hmm. Getting ahead of myself. Here we go. Along comes a squid, quite a slender squiggly sight. She is squirmy, she is squelchy, and she is slightly impolite. Hey, Mr. Fish, you kaleidoscope of a mope. How about a smile, a little joy, a little hope? Says the fish to his friend, Mrs. Squid. I would try, but I haven't had any choice. Take a look and you'll see why. Hmm. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, 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 blub. Mm. Along comes an octopus with eight great arms covered on the undersides of tiny sucker charms. Hey, Mr. Fish, let me tell you, let me tell it to you straight. You're a hulky, bulky, sulking. It is very unattractive to rate. Says the fish to his friend, Mr. Eight, my chum, with a mouth like mine, I am destined to be a glum. Oh, my goodness. I'm a pow pow fish. With a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary rearies all over the place. <gasps> blub, blub, blub. Now comes along a fish in a silent sliver shimmer the gang has never seen before, this bright and brilliant swimmer. She approaches Mr. Fish, but instead of saying, hey, let's see what she says. She plants a kiss upon his pout, and then she swims away. But of course, she has permission. <laughs> Mr. Fish is most astounded. Mr. Fish is just a guest. He is stone faced like a statue, and then he blinks and speaks at last. My friend, said Mr. Fish, I should have known it all along. I thought that I was pouty, but it turns out I was wrong. <laughs> I'm a kiss kiss fish with a kiss kiss face for spreading cheery cherries all over the place. So I'll smooch and smooch and smooch. And smooch. The end. Well, you guys, it was so nice to read with you, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed reading with you. Have a beautiful day and stay healthy. Bye.